Hello, everybody, and welcome back to To Be Like Christ. I hope you enjoy the new wallpaper behind me. Whoever designed this apartment definitely had different tastes than me, but uh, it'll work. So <laughs> uh, they had some eclectic choices here. So anyway, let's talk about Joshua chapter 14. We've got a free PDF that you can download. It's the same one that I'm reading all these notes off of. So hopefully you've read the chapter already. Let's jump in and talk about some of the details. When did these events happen? As we've mentioned several times, the Israelites began their conquest of the land of the promised land in approximately 1450 BC. And that lasted uh, somewhere between five to, to seven years. Now in this chapter specifically, we can use the age of Caleb, who hopefully you, you read about in your reading, uh, mentioned in verses 7 through 10, and we can conclude from that that the events of this chapter took place 45 years after Moses sent the 12 spies into the land of Canaan. Do you remember that? Way back before the wandering in the wilderness, Numbers chapter 13. Our main characters include Joshua. He is the leader of the Israelite nation. God selected him after another character in this chapter, Moses, passed away. Now Moses passed away back in um, Deuteronomy 34, but we will mention him and, and talk about some of the uh, details about him in this chapter. We're also going to talk about Caleb, who we just mentioned. Caleb was one of the 12 spies that was selected to go in and spy out the land of Canaan in Numbers chapter 13. He was one of only two spies, the other one being Joshua, who came back with a good report and tried to encourage the people to put their faith in God and to go up and conquer the land. Where exactly were the Israelites in this chapter? Well, they were camped at Gilgal, and you'll see Gilgal on the map. There's a question mark by it because there is still some debate as to the exact location. It seems like it was definitely in that area, but exactly and precisely where it was, mm, there's still some discussion. Joshua 14 and the following chapters record how the promised land was divided up between the 12 tribes. So we're going to talk about really every every p or every portion of this map is going to be relevant to the discussion of the upcoming chapters. So as we look at our outline, let's take a look at our first section, verses 1 through 5, dividing the land between the tribes of Israel. So Joshua 14 verse 1, and, and you could argue last chapter as well, introduces the topic of the next several chapters, which is, as we mentioned, the allotment of land to the tribes of Israel. Each tribe was going to get a certain portion of land, and that portion of land was determined by casting lots, which was a form of random selection, and this is used several times in the Bible. Now, two and a half tribes, as we talked about in the last chapter, already received their land on the east side of Jordan. The Levites were not going to receive land because they were a special tribe devoted to God, and they were going to receive cities within the territories of all the other tribes. So the nine and a half remaining tribes were going to get their land on the west side of the river. So this is really the introduction. The next chapters will tell us precisely like the border lines of each of these individual portions of land. Having only 15 verses, the rest of this chapter is devoted to a section that I've entitled Caleb's Request. So Caleb approached Joshua, and he asked Joshua to fulfill a promise that had been made to him by Moses several decades earlier. Moses had promised Caleb that the land that he had spied out on his spying mission would belong to him and his children because he had shown great faith in God. Caleb, being 85 years old, told Joshua that he was as strong as 85 as he had been at 40 years old. And he asked Joshua to allot him the hill country where the Anakin, An Anakin, no, not Star Wars, Anakim lived. <laughs> the Anakim were a very strong people who lived in, quote, great fortified city. So Caleb wants a challenge. Caleb believed that the Lord was going to help him get victory over the Anakim. So Joshua granted Caleb his request and he gave him Hebron. And Hebron was formerly known as Kiriath Arba. Arba was the name of the greatest man among the Anakim. All right, so that's Joshua chapter 14. It's setting us up for the details of the land divisions that are going to come in the next chapter. And it's telling us about the promise that was kept to Caleb. Now, let's talk about our application. Make a plan to be ambitious in the Lord's service in your older years. You know, Caleb specifically re uh, requested a challenge that required God's assistance to complete. He wasn't interested in a life of ease and retiring on the beach, sitting around doing nothing all day, sipping coffee. He wanted to see God's power at work in his older years the way that he had seen it at work in his younger years. 
If our Lord lets us get old, are we going to choose a life of ease that doesn't require or necessitate God's help at all? Or are we going to choose a life of faith that longs to see God's power and His providence working in our lives as we spend the last couple years of our life here on earth before we get to meet Him?